Welcome. Welcome. To Shade, Shade in the City. City. I'm your girl, Trice. It's Nels. And today we are jumping into our review of the finished finale, which, you know, they could have, they could have tacked this on and gave us another 20 minutes and we could have moved on, but it's okay. Um, we are doing part three of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Um, the so, finale. Oh, finally. I said the finale. Finally. The finale. Finally. Um, so please, if you have not already, hit that like button. And that subscribe button. And just saying welcome back to our Shade Squad and welcome our new viewers. And y'all, like I said, they could have packed this up in 20 minutes and tacked it on to number two, but it's okay. They just, you know, they needed to fill another Sunday until Potomac comes, which we will be covering as well. But anyway, y'all, let's get into it and let's get shady. So Anthony is still flip-flopping. We jump back into this. He's dodging the question of whether or not he said Ralph was gay. He said maybe he said it, but he's not sure. He says that it came up, but he doesn't remember. Real flip-floppish. Now, what he does know is that Drew needs a storyline to get on this season. And so Andy, I love what Andy, he, he just hangs up. Um, and then points out to Drew that um, he did say he did admit that he said that about Ralph. You heard that, right? And Marlo tells Drew she needs to erase his number out of her phone. And I was in complete agreement. Now, somehow, this moves on to how Sheree heard that Drew doesn't pay her bills. And they replay, I guess, unseen footage that we've never seen before of Sonya, I guess, reading a text message of some sort about how Drew and Ralph owed somebody money that used to work for them. Um, Drew basically says that, you know, she pays all her people. That's never an issue. And she don't know, you know, who that person is or what they talk about. No offense. If it was Sheree that said that, you would be in her behind, Drew. Just saying. Now, Drew says that she has cash apps. Now, this is what, Drew, we're going to need you to go to so the class that Sonya went to. We're going to need you to go to take that class. Because the reads that you was trying to give wasn't given. It wasn't real. She she, she she sometimes be on point. She sometimes. No, be but on this point. time when she's like, I have cash apps from people who wanted to send sex tapes of you, Sheree. Sheree said, bring your come on with it. She, she was said, like, that I would like nice to see that. She like, shoot. She like, I know, look, she know I ain't a busted can of biscuits. I know I look good under under these fluorescent lights. Not even that. Sheree not stupid. I know she know these Atlanta streets. She been around with Mimi and all them. She know what happens when you release a sex tape and it's good. <laughs> Sheree will be hanging from a ceiling fan near you. Anyway, I another allegedly. One. Allegedly. She have a, a Chateau Sheree number two, huh? Right. <laughs> so... Um, yes. Then basically, um, after we get through that, the viewers bring up how Sheree feels Candy can't get upset, um, or how Sheree feels Candy can't get upset about people calling her a hoe because she's heard it before, but still gets upset when people call her out for not paying her bills. She said that she feels like it's old and people need new content. And obviously I feel like she's referring to Drew, which Drew, if she wasn't referring to her, Drew, you know, toes was burning or something because she calls her out and says well you said you would give me 50 percent and we all know she's talking about the party for marlo and mm -hmm. kenya and how she still hasn't paid sheree tells her she went overboard she so was trying to buy friends right and she was like i'm not out here trying to buy friends like drew so um drew then sheree points out that this is what drew does she makes things up and repeats false things that she heard. Drew says she's not making it up because she's one of the people Sheree now owes. And I said, well, and so she wants her money. Sheree tells her, bitch, don't hold your breath. And you know what? She says, well, I'm clearly an investor in she by Sheree now. So yeah, she goes, go make that money, honey. 
go sell them $140 leggings. You better. You better. <laughs> a fan does not understand. She's like, basically like, how does nobody understand why Drew, why Drew was upset, upset about the background that Patron checks. was talking about her husband and doing a background check? And all the ladies just say, yeah, okay, the background check was way too far. And Sheree says she can't control people. Like, she gonna, look, that's her friend that she gonna stick beside her. Even though she knows she dead ass wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know. So Drew still felt like they could have said it wasn't okay and that they didn't agree with it. And she says it's laughable because Ralph is a... Is a junior. Is a See, junior. Like and his dad is a senior. And basically, she says that the ex-wife name was Darlene and feels like there could have been a mix-up with the Darlene Danielle thing. And look, everybody was basically like, it's giving scammer. Like, ma'am, cut it out with all it's this. Giving, it was giving crickets. That's what it was giving. Yeah, and Marlo says, yeah, you know, just like I'm Latoya. Right. Marlo, we still don't know how you make your money, so... It could be given scammer too. Cut it out. Drew just felt like it was real nasty what she did. And Sheree tells her that she was aggressive and she was just trying to tell her what her assistant said and she was attacked. And Drew says she she had nothing to do with the conversation. She didn't even know who she was. And she's like, yes, ma'am. Yes, she did. Yeah, you did. Okay. Sonia says she feels that Drew's actions were warranted. Right. And Come through, but they, were just, but they were misplaced. And I can agree. That really, it should have been the assistant that she was mad at. And not Fatum or Sheree. But I can see why she was mad at everybody, bitch, because you carry in the bone. Mm -hmm. So whether it came from my assistant or not, my assistant's not here spreading these salacious lies. Okay? Well. So a fan asked Drew... Why go so far out of your way to involve a dog bone prop and like in your argument with Fatum? And she said she's an actress and she expresses herself dramatically. I said, okay, you know what? I'll give you that, boo. She I'll give you that. <laughs> you know what? Um, Andy brings up a tweet that Charade tweeted saying, bitch be stealing props from the movie. After the they movie tell her she didn't she get the role. That she didn't get the role. Drew, Drew trying but to you know say, what you know what and this I'm not even but y'all know I'm team Drew but um uh, Sheree are you mad because when what role did you get outside of getting recast for Real Housewives of Atlanta for the fifth or sixth time after being kicked off the show I don't know how many times so what you're not gonna do is come for Drew who actually gets real acting jobs just yeah. saying Sheree has nerve so Andy asked Sheree after Jamaica what made her go visit Drew, you know, when she was recovering. And Sheree said she actually felt bad that she injured herself. And Drew said, you know, she brought her a nice gift and everything. And she felt like she was like in the twilight zone because even Sonia came to visit. But she really appreciated the love and um, support that she was getting. Sonia says Drew was being a good sport for, you know, even doing the run. Mm -hmm. And you know, she felt really bad herself that she got hurt. Andy addresses the fact that Sheree and Drew both went on Twitter about husbands and finances and asked where they are now. And Sheree, um, Sheree, Sheree, Sheree said, where? yeah, basically they're coexisting and basically Drew said she no ain't sleep. losing no sleep. She said confetti. And basically, they're like, we ain't got no bags under our eyes, but we still looking Fresh phrase and cute, okay? We're going to sit here and we're going to smile. <laughs> Andy decides it's time to take a break. And Sheree um, and Drew are back at it again about Anthony and whether Drew knew that there was a connection between him and Sheree. Andy says this guy just seems like he has bad news. And, you know, he's just trying to fuck with both of y'all. Basically, like, be done with his ass. And you know what's so crazy? In this moment... At least for me, it showed me that they probably want to be closer than they display. Mm -hmm. It's probably easier to be catty and not mm -hmm. like each other on TV. But the fact that I thought when the cameras weren't rolling and or when they thought the cameras weren't rolling and Drew took the opportunity to try to 
hash shit out with her. Like, why are you believing Anthony over me? You know what I'm saying? When we both know he lies. I actually appreciated that. I actually well, appreciated that moment. To me, to me, I think, yeah, they definitely want to be closer. We saw where Drew didn't even know Sheree like that. Right. And he wanted to do her, her party. Yeah, you're right. She came over, did the party for her. Uh, Sheree came to check up on her after she was hurt in Jamaica. I mean, you know, the I, I, those are steps in the right direction. It's just this bullshit that they can't get over with Anthony and Fatum. Once they come back from lunch, y'all, they are bringing out the real husbands of Atlanta. So all the men are backstage preparing for the questions and, you know, things that they're going to be grilled about, like Ralph's gaslighting. Todd jokes about Candy supporting him and says he ain't made no money since they've been together. It was actually really, really funny. I don't think Ross was even really Yeah, he said, he, said, he said he was broke every year. Right. Um, Ross, I don't think, was really expecting no smoke besides, you know, his little tell, you know, don't with my wife. And he meant that. So I don't think he he was like, I'll say it again. Anyway, so they bring him out. Andy brings up. I say it twice. Fuck this. <laughs> right. Um, so Ralph brings up no, Andy brings up Ralph and a massage. And I was confused by this because we know Ralph was offered a massage from the assistant. And that was the whole thing of the show. But oh, I yeah, he was like, like, he was like, you know, I need a massage. You know any place I can go? Oh. And yeah, he was like, he was like, he was like, you know, he's like, I got some options. And look, Drew was like, he's like, but you know, my, my wife got to co-sign it first. <laughs> then they asked Ross how he um how this feels in comparison to a Super Bowl. And he admits it's a bit different. Andy tries to explain to him that the reunion is a Super Bowl of Real, ho Real Housewives, basically. Um, and they bring up how the guys have remained close since ending filming. Um, apparently, they were up till 6 a.m. that morning. Candy was in that In the lobby. Candy and we see footage of ass. Candy going to confront Todd. I'm not going to lie to you. This would be me. I'd be like, I'm that so That would be so every cool. wife. I'd be so, so cool. Have fun with your friends. Fine. But if I get up and you are still up drinking and having not even that. she was like, she's like, she's like, this is the reunion. Okay. You gotta have your shit together. You gotta be on your P's and Q's. We ain't got time right. to be bullshitting. They gonna come, they they coming for that ass. You gotta be right. ready. But um, so apparently the guys promised to get him there, make sure he gets in the bed. And um, Andy asked Ross about parenting and getting on the same page as Sonya. He says in the beginning, his ways of parenting was different. It took him talking to his mom and realizing that there was, that their parenting ways differ. He had to be the father and allow Sonya to let Deuce be her little baby. And I was still confused. I was like, yeah, I didn't understand. That. Oh, okay. Okay. So it wasn't just me. I, did, I didn't understand how that. As long, look, it don't matter if we understand as long as Sonya and understand what the hell going on. But on you know, they, they edit so much that sometimes right. it just doesn't make sense. So, right. So they bring up how um, he was cool and quiet all season until Jamaica and asked, you know, what brought that out of you? And he says he was trying to de-escalate and didn't appreciate what was going on. And he asked his feelings on Kenya's aggressive comment and how he felt. And Ross says that he understood where it was coming from, but it wasn't the right thing to say. He said that, you know, they did get an opportunity the next day at the airport to talk it over. And she lets him know that she never thought that he would attack them or, and you know, that he's a very cool guy. Or that she didn't feel threatened. Right, that she didn't feel threatened. Mm -hmm. um, and that she admires him for sticking up for his wife. Um, and basically Ross says that he appreciates that she said that. And Todd was like, well, you know, I still felt a little nervous. Was, I was a little nervous though. Um, <laughs> I, will say, I, I, I appreciate Kenya saying that too. Because we all know how that word can be and when you put exactly somebody so mm -hmm. um, you know what I you know you know you know what I can appreciate though what even though Todd stayed up till six I felt like he was ready for this reunion he was he came in he, guns blazing he was ready he was ready they might he's ready to take on look, the world look they might fuck around and give Todd a peach right he was ready to take on the world Pink. speaking of Todd they jump into Candy's portion of the show 
Mm-hmm. Candy tells Candy he wore a pair of her vibrating panties on Watch What Happens Live, and Marlo had the remote. Apparently, this was a lot of fun. I did not see this episode, but he says it was a wild ride. Uh, he brings up how Sonya seemed to really be enjoying herself with the panties as well. And apparently, Sonya, if did I catch this right? This is the first time they use sex toys. Yeah, she said that they usually don't use sex toys, and yeah, she- if I was Candy. I would have been in my pocket. And I'd be like, girl, I am sending something to your a package. Right? I'm so sorry for you. Right. <laughs> you poor baby. Right. So they asked Ross how he felt. And even when, I don't know. See, I noticed everybody, like, mannerisms, faces. And even when they were talking about it, and she was talking about how she never used it before. And Ross, I mean, uh, Ross is just looking at her like, do you really need to be telling them what we be doing in our bedroom? What we be, you know? Or what we don't be doing? I or mean, what we don't be doing, right. So um, they asked Ross how he felt about Ralph controlling Sonya's panties. And he actually said that he didn't realize until he watched the show. Um, Now, Andy brings up one of the viewers calling uh, Marlo out for claiming Todd and Candy were her friends, but took every opportunity to come for their marriage. Now, Marlo does admit that she was wrong for saying it, but believes every man cheats. But she says she gonna mind her business. She gonna stop speaking on married folk because she ain't married and she need to sit her ass down somewhere. And we know she said that, but she not. So she, but she does apologize to Todd um, and thanks him for being a little bit easier than the girls. So you know what? I'm 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 glad that she apologized, right? But is it wrong that I felt like she should apologize to both of them? You notice she gave a lot of apologies to Todd and didn't address Candy. When she was like, I apologize to you, Todd. Now, I understand a lot of the things that she said was directed to him, right? But bitch, you still took shots at me in the process. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, you're coming for our relationship. So yeah. I felt like it should have been. Oh, no, me and me. And, to if, boy. If I'm, a, I'm not I'm not even going to hold you. Me and Todd will get into that shade squad. Me and Todd would have had issues. If I'm still beefing with this bitch, you're still beefing with this bitch. You're talking about Candy? Yeah. But I can understand and, why yeah, she... I, you might want to forget and look past it, but not... No, not. I, under, I understand why she let it go because it was mainly directed towards him. And she's like, if you can let it go and it's directed towards you, why am I still holding on to it if you've let it go? Which is basically like how I told you with relationships. I guess. Andy brings up Sheree saying Todd was in the streets and maybe... um. Candy should be worried. Now they also bring up how Todd mentioned their that their sex life was lacking, um, and Todd says that Mama Joy said the same thing. Um, and and nothing didn't come of it, right? Ain't nothing transpired. He mm-hmm. said, "With these ladies, the streets are always talking," which we know. And Andy Period. asked Sheree why she said that, and she says she was just piggybacking off of her conversation she had with Marlo, mm-hmm. but she hasn't heard anything about Todd. And I just wanted to say something. Did not two minutes prior, and it probably wasn't two minutes their time because of editing, but at least for show purposes and what we saw, did you not two minutes prior just call out Drew and say that she repeats false rumors and things that she knows is not true? And you just admitted two minutes after that you knew something might not be true? You had no, but you just repeated. But she also admitted that she did the same thing with uh, Ralph. She doesn't believe that he's gay, but she repeated it. I'm just saying, it's a lot of it's a lot of stones and glass houses in this in this place. That's all. They bring up why um, uh, Kyle. Hold on. They want to know why Todd wants Kayla to struggle. While Riley, you know, basically gets to live her life. the life of luxury. Right. <laughs> and he says that, you know, they're from the Bronx. You know what I, he was like, look, I don't give a fuck what y'all say. Like, Riley's upbringing is her upbringing. And this is Kayla's. That's my child. And he was like, Kayla's going to grow up and appreciate that struggle. He talks about how she's doing very well. Um, okay, so apparently Kayla has her own apartment. Chanel corrected me. And um, she is doing very well. And Todd did remodel the New Jersey condo. And it looks very nice. They show little clips very of nice. it. Candy is very excited. She says that. Oh, excuse me, y'all. 
Andy brings up the piano lessons, you know, her next show on Broadway. The red carpet is opening the same week before BravoCon. So she's excited about her huge upcoming week. Her whole family's coming up and they're going to stay in the condo. Period. So, and that's what, you know what, that's what he wanted. That's what Todd wanted. When they go up there, they have a place to stay. That's what he wanted. Then they bring up the comment of being remarried after if Candy should, you know, so pass. And <laughs> I, I actually, I'm not going to lie. I thought this was hilarious. This is so true. Right here. This, this is me. So Candy talks about, uh, Andy asked her, you know, why do you feel so strongly about this? And she talks about how, you know, it's her family history with her grandfather when he remarried and the past and the wife basically same them inherited everything because inherited the, the everything. grandmother passed Left them with nothing passed. yeah and so i love because this would have been me and todd is like but i thought it was because you were possessive and you love me so much she's like baby i do i do i do love you but no it's and see i would have felt that way like oh no i just really thought you loved me that much <laughs> love me that much so, um <laughs> No, that was pretty cute. So we get to Drew's portion of the show. They talk about, and I, Andy is shady as fuck. He said, they want to talk about the fractures in her marriage and her Achilles. I said, did the marriage have to be fractured? This is why he gets paid the big bucks. I said, that, that was a really strong, what is that verb, adjective? That was really strong. <laughs> Adverb? Well, I, feel, I feel like it was fitting. Well, viewers ask um, if Ralph really fired the assistant. Because they never got a straightforward answer. And Ralph says that he did fire her. Now, this is, you know what? I'm not going to lie. I see why I see why she stayed with him. Because this would be, that will do it for me. He gets up on this public platform. And he said. He did act totally different on this stage. I ain't going to lie. He did act he totally said, different. He, he hit us with the Elijah one. He was a whole new person on the stage, okay? Yeah. He, he came out, he said, you know, he feels like how he came across on TV didn't show the real love and respect that he has for his wife. And he knows he basically needs to do better and apologizes to Drew. I said, okay, Ralph, it's about damn time. You can't be that fine and be an asshole, but I'm uh, you know, You know what's crazy? What? He's such an asshole to me that I can't even see him as fine no more. No, you only time I see him as fine is when they're in pictures together. I, I can't I can't see it. To me, because I she I, because I do think that she compliments him. So I'm so they're a beautiful disgusted. couple and it makes him look better. But then when he opens his mouth, it does make him more unattractive. I'm so disgusted by his behavior that anytime I see him or speak his name, it literally makes me like get you know, you get how you get that knot in your throat that makes you want to vomit. Oh, oh, not that one. Yeah, I can't see him as attractive. Seriously, like I can't. So Andy brings up the text messages and asks if any of the other gentlemen, um, you know. If they like, feel like it's this, if it's still laughable to them. Right. Now, Ross says from his perspective, it was funny. But after knowing how Drew felt about it, he still thinks it was funny. But, you know, obviously not as entertaining. Uh, Todd says he don't want no smoke. So whatever Drew feels, that's what he feels. That's what he feels. I said, okay. I, I, I just love Todd on this. Todd was giving. Todd, Todd was giving. I just say I'm. I'm not y'all. I understand it was the Real Housewives of Atlanta, but Todd came through. He for did. The husbands. Like he held it down. I mean, all the husbands did a very good job, but Todd came in, and I guess maybe because he's from production, he done sat and watched these ladies go back and forth. Maybe him and Candy sat. Well, we know they ain't sit up and practice the night before. No, because his ass was. That's what makes it even. That's what even makes it better. The fact that he's like riding on a few hours of sleep, probably hung over. Right. Like, he's still charismatic, and you know I loved it. And he, made, he made this part of the reason. I stopped too. drinking. So can you imagine how hungover he really is? Because remember, he wasn't even drinking when they first went to wherever. He was like, "Oh, nah." And he That's was right. Drinks. Mm. So I would imagine he would be trapped. I know he made he made this part of the show for me. Yeah, no, he really did. Um, so we talked that shit about they didn't need it, but it was nice. Todd was a highlight of this mm -hmm. extra hour that we had to spend. Fan oh, asked Kenya if she wished some of her friends would have stood up 
to Mark the way Ralph stood up to, you know, everybody, everybody. And she said, you know, it's 50-50. Um, because you know, she would no, like I think she was saying does she wish that a friend would have stuck up for her the way with Mark the way she did for Drew with Ralph. Is that what that was saying? Mm-hmm. Because remember, she spoke up for Drew when they were talking about they were talking about something and he shut Drew down when they were in New York and Kenya spoke up for him. And her and and so they were saying, do you wish somebody would have done that for you when you were with Mark? And she was like, yeah, oh, the way she stood up for Drew. Right. Mm. But she was like, that's a sticky situation. She was like, because yeah. I realized that I pulled up in the middle of an argument like between. Mm -hmm. And that's touchy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So then a fan asked the entire group, why is it that no one said anything when Kenya confronted Ralph in New York? But everyone was on Marlo for checking Ralph about Josiah. Sonia says that she spoke to Kenya after that. And, you know, she felt like Kenya did feel like she was a little bit rough. But she also believes that when too many people are involved, you know, mm. the argument will continue to escalate. So right. she feels like that's really what happened. A fan then asked why everyone's coming so hard for Drew. Even Kenya and Candy are throwing shots. And they at her when they're supposed friends. to be her friends. How many of us have them? Kenya, you so stupid. <laughs> Kenya and Candy are at a complete loss. They're like, what? What shade? Like, what are you talking about? And Drew, she clearly knew what the hell they was talking about. So she fills them in and she's like, the whole drop it with Drew. And she feels like, you know, she could have got more support. With and that. you know what I love, Candy? This would be, I'm, I'm not going to lie to y'all. This would be nails. She going to live in her truth. She said, I wasn't, I support you. I wasn't really, but it looked a little sketchy. There was some things, but I'm going to tell you. There was some things that was questionable. Was questionable things, but I still love you, girl. I'm still your friend. And she was like, you know, even initially, she was like, you know, the way it was presented to them was like it was her business. She didn't know that she was just the face of the business. Right. So Andy asked Drew, do you feel like, you know, you should have been more direct? And she was like, you know, I didn't lay out my business plan, but she felt like she was being open and honest and was and open to constructive criticism. Over, she did have Sonya over to help her taste her food. Like, remember the tasting? So she did it. She was like, that's why I was asking him for ideas. These are both biz women with business Y'all know I'm team Drew, so I'm going to defend her. because We she, know that you don't know how crazy. to tell a story. You leave out important details just like Drew. So you would have left out that you're not the founder and just the face? If that is not a lie. <laughs> That's the face for me, right? <laughs> if that is not a lie, I'm just not a liar. Okay? I never know. It's not. So, uh, no. A liar. Okay, it's, it, but so it's not. It's not that she's not important details. Those who are important will know. So with Trees, yes, Trees is known for leaving out important details, but I know it's not on purpose. But I feel it like the be a lie. It, 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 but the ladies don't. Uh, I guess they don't know this yet about Drew, and if maybe that's her personality, and she may just leave out important details. And I think what they were getting at was she was making it seem like she was the founder of this company. But in reality, it's not your company. You're literally just the face. You're the person that draws people in because of who you are. You're like a model. Basically. Um, but that's not what you were giving. At, at the, well, really at the, an, an influencer. And that's not bad. And really, at the end of the day, as an influencer or the face of um, a company... To be honest with you, you're not really gonna have them over to taste the foods and shit like that because you're just the face. You're you're coming in because of who I am. You're not coming in as a found. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like as a founder or as the no, owner, no, no, no. I, I, I I think that I think that I am similar to Drew when I it, she is the type of person that unless you ask her because I'm that type unless you ask me certain questions. I'm not even going to think that that's something I need to tell you until you ask. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, no, that. And then you'll be like, well, how did you leave that out? And I'm like, oh, because I just didn't think about it. 
So I understand where she's coming from. But Drew, you know, she's like, you know, I felt like I could have got more support. And she didn't feel that it was grounds to really be called a busted can of biscuits. And because that girl candy, looked what? Look, Candy, Candy, like, hold up. That was not me. That was not me. Sheree admits that it was her. But, you know, she apologizes. She does not, she does not look like a busted can of biscuits. Drew actually stands up and shows that body, yaddy, yaddy. Okay. And she's looking good. And ain't no she business that she, over here, bitch. She says that she she lost between 15 and 20 pounds. She ain't gonna well, say at what first, it was. I'm, okay, I'm I'm not gonna hold you, Drew. It did sound like you said 50 to 50. 20. <laughs> look, <laughs> look, you saw Sheree. She, Sheree said you said what? How much? How much? How much? Yeah, she said 15 to 20. Um, and we know she ain't gonna say how much exactly because last time she did it said how fast she lost it. People lost their damn minds. But Sheree did apologize for saying that she looked like a busted can of biscuits. She said she didn't know her backstory. Um, and tells us that she looks great. Right. So Andy asked Ralph how he felt about things, um, about the things Sheree said about him in the confessional. And if he was happy upset. Ralph says he was upset 100%. One about you the fact know that. I'm not gay. You know that for a fact. She said, I don't know that for a fact. I believe you're not, but I don't know that for a fact. And she's 100% right. Number one, we're in Atlanta. I don't know. I don't know. I believe that you're not. Based on what I know. But do I know what you do in your private time? No. No, I do not. Well, not what um, you do in your private time. He just feels well, some type uh, of way. You know what we know? We know he spends private time in Tampa. But go ahead. You know, I caught something in this this damn episode, and I don't even think Drew's ass caught it. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? This is this is why I cannot with this man. Basically, he tells her that you know he gives her the utmost respect, and he expects the same in return. Um, and not to be you know having her talk shit behind, about him behind her back. And she says that it was your assistant, sir. It was your assistant that did it. And he feels like the problem is that she's the one carrying the message. The body that, carrier. That's what, the, and that, that's what I'm saying. It's not about who started it. It's who keeps talking about it. Exactly. Carrying it around. Um, and Sheree says, basically, your wife does the same thing. Girl, that is a cop out. So Ralph also brings up the dildo comment. Thank and you, Ralph. Did, Thank you, Ralph. She did, she did apologize for that. Now, you know what I like about Ralph? Because this is not giving Kenya at all. I was going to say, he came with what he was upset he about. Was, he he was ready. He was ready to explain why he was upset, what she did. Until he had definitely to asked. in his book. But go ahead. Sheree definitely asked. Oh, <laughs> you're a dick. <laughs> he made me so mad, but go ahead. <laughs> and look, poor Candy. Candy tried to help his ass out. But she... <laughs> he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand why Sheree continues to do this shit or say shit that is really to hurt Drew. She's attacking him to hurt Drew. And she basically says, um, like, you can't pick and choose what you believe that your assistant says. Like, you know, you believed everything that he said about me, but now when he's saying shit about you, I'm I'm just not supposed to believe it. Now, now, now it's false. Now it's a lie. It's automatically not true. Well, Sheree, and but you want people true. to believe you pay your bills when you just told us two episodes ago that you don't believe people are supposed to be paid unless you feel they should. Apparently, it's whatever comes out the... Well, I guess the assistant did say that. Never mind. Um, so Drew says that this is like weirdo behavior, okay? Like, this is weirdo behavior. And Sheree is like, no, boo. What's weird is the fact that you don't want to confront Fatum to her face. I don't know. Um, Drew tells her I don't that she think I've ever seen anything where Drew has not been ready for that smoke when it comes to uh, Fatum. So I don't know what Sheree's talking about. So oh, actually, Drew feels that what she needs to be worried about um, is she by she not done yet. Okay. Because <laughs> that's your next storyline. That's the only reason why we're following you another season is to see what she by Sheree is doing. And if it ain't doing nothing, we still want to follow that though. We still want to follow the fact that oh, so we can talk about you, of course. But I mean, it's it's great for TV. But as far as every Sunday for 30, 30 40 minutes, I gotta watch you 
self-sabotage your business this this struggle company absolutely yep struggle yeah bless. I, I do yes i do um and sheree says oh drop it by who drop it by who you ain't even got your own business um and marlo's just like oh, jesus christ can't we just all get along marlo i know damn what you ain't talking i love how marlo was trying to play like a peacemaker this so a fan asked Ralph, looking back on his behavior, is there anything he would have changed about the dinner he had with Drew? And he says, yes, a lot. He says his intention was to give his wife something that would show her that he appreciates her. And, you know, he went all out on it. But he says in retrospect, um, you know, if he could do it all over again, he would take a different approach and make sure that he understood her heart and what she was looking for and provided that. Okay. I said, all right, Ralph. It, and and I appreciate that, Ralph. All she needed was you to tell her you wasn't fucking nobody else in Tampa. That's what she needed, and she needed you he to. He couldn't tell her that. What happened? He couldn't tell he her. He couldn't that? tell her that. That's why he did this to sweep it under the rug. That's and, why I but can't. But do you understand? I'm happy that he gets. But what what we what I needed, even though I thought it was, and you know, I'm a sucker for the romance. But what I needed in that moment was for you to not, no, let's, I would have been Drew. Um, thank you for the lovely dinner. This is beautiful. So did you, you so you're fucking other bitches? That's what we're doing. You're, you're going to Tampa and fucking other, like it wouldn't have been able to, so I'm not mad at Drew for that. That's why I think it's so crazy that all these viewers and whatever are mad at her because she messed up this perfect dinner. Is the dinner perfect if my husband's fucking somebody else? And I know. I don't, but I don't remember what it was. Did she, what did she say to make it like? He basically was just like. Cause she, I don't think she brought that up at the dinner. He wanted to talk about it. And he was like, I don't want to talk about that. He mm. was trying to sweep it under the rug. Like mm -hmm. you said. Like manipulators do. So a fan asked Drew why every time she goes to a nice event, she has to ruin it with her childish behavior. Again, mm. referring to the dinner. And that her husband set up and, you know, her dog bone throwing. Drew at says Marlo's that she realized, event. huh? No, at Marlo's event, her dog bone throwing, yeah. I really, let me say something. Marlo, I would have loved to have been at your event. Okay. The thing. I was going to say, I wouldn't have thrown no bones, girl. I wouldn't have thrown, thrown no bones. Um, Drew says that she did realize that that triggered him, but she didn't realize that expressing herself, um, you know, that things would go left the way that they did. She said that she wants to be on a, like, wants everything to be, like, on a consistent level. She, you know, he always does try to woo her and it's romance the high highs her, and the low lows for her. But the high highs and the low lows are tough for her. So, Andy brings to his attention that you know the fans are not happy with his gaslighting we're talking about ralph i'm sorry um mm -hmm. his gaslighting and he says watching it back you know he was it was startling he says he can see the things that he says um so you know, might not have been the best choice what you say i'm so you know i'm a softy i'm so proud of ralph he, girl he's just a smooth talker that's what manipulators do god okay <laughs> um, he just feels like you know that they weren't the best choice and you know there's going to be times where like there was times where you know he could have adjusted his attitude but you know uh what's her face drew jumps in his defense and says you know that those are things that you know they're working on with dr ken still andy asks ross and todd if they think that you know the way ralph speaks to his wife is okay and ross says well, you know, he just admitted himself that it wasn't okay. So he's like, yeah, you know, I agree that it wasn't okay. Mm. A fan asked Drew if um, if it's off that Ralph is writing a book about being a stepfather and he treats Josiah differently. And you know, this is I, what Drew said. So I didn't get the vibe. Where, where in the show did it show that he was treating Josiah differently? Drew said this. Well, I know she said it right now on this platform, but I don't remember. No, no, no. she said that before. Oh. She said okay. that before. And that's why I was like, Drew can't even be mad that somebody brought that up because she said it. Um, and she does it go in to admit that 
it's it, it she does see a biological difference. She said she said there's a different Ralph connection. Treats yeah. The other kids versus Josiah, she still loves him and is gonna you know raise him to be a good man. However, there is a disconnect. I won't say disconnect, but there there's a difference. She said there's a difference. There's a difference between uh, biological versus step. And bottom line is his intentions is to raise Josiah as a great man in the world. Um, and he says, it seems like, you know. It seems like they still have a lot of unresolved stuff. The way they kept giving looks at each other and side eyes and she would say something and he would look her like you didn't. It was just very like, oh, y'all, y'all definitely still in therapy, which is good. But mm -hmm. um, yeah. So Andy says it seems like he's constantly not including her in things and mm. asked so you seriously didn't tell her you was working on a book and he's like no you know I, I told my wife my wife and she's like yeah you told me after you flew to Chicago and surprised me at Joe's crab house that you signed a book deal and of course it started an argument because she ain't no shit about the shit well that part Andy asked him what if she didn't want stories included in his book about her son ralph admits that that's fair but he thinks the intent of the book is wrong he says there's three reasons to adopt a child he says one the father is deceased second the father doesn't want to have anything to do with the child and the third reason he just drew a blank it was crickets like y'all here right now. Basically, uh, even poor, poor Candy, because she tried to help him. She's like, what, what did it say in the book? What did it say in the book? He basically says that he's going to, um, he feels like he's going to do right by Josiah. Um, and, you know, their fi family dynamic, but he's basically going to do what's best for him is what I got for him. He may not adopt him, but he's going to do what's best for his family. And he tells him that, you know, it's, like it's still like a big thing like that you didn't tell your wife and she six you know she gonna stick with Sodom she says you know that that's something that has been ongoing in their marriage and they're still working on clearly in therapy mm -hmm. so Andy asked Ralph if the book was done and he says yes actually me and the guys have been planning on you know something like doing a book tour and Todd says yes and it's gonna start, it's gonna in, start Tampa. in Tampa I don't know why nobody else caught on to this. But you got me fucked up. Let me say something. If I was Drew, every time you mention Tampa, right. every time you mention a state with a T, it's going to be a problem. Tennessee, Tampa, nope. Thailand, which is a problem. Hell no, you won't go. Todd says that, you know, Ralph is, you know, mending and blending families. And he calls himself Daddy Daycare and says Ross is the mentor of the group. So they're going on a whole book tour. Hide your husbands, ladies. Hide your husbands because what you don't want them to do is be going to get massages in Tampa. Andy moves on to Candy and Marlo. And of course, you know, showing the clips of their, you know, their shit. Um, and ending it with Candy basically saying, you know, she's not Michelle Obama, but, you know, if you go low, bitch, I'm going to go low with you. So Candy directs her attention to the camera and tells Obama di Michelle Obama directly, okay, okay, that she did not mean any disrespect by what she said. She was basically just saying that she was not up to her standards. Um, and Andy jokes, well, you know, we got this. That's the first time we have Obama addressed her directly. I thought it was funny. Andy act like Michelle Michelle Obama tweeted. They were, everybody's like, "What? What was she saying?" No. Mm -mm. So, know, she know. Sorry, sorry, friend. Sorry, friend. She's not watching. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> she she don't watch this. She's she's, she's too high. She don't watch this wretched TV. Mm -mm. So a fan addressed Marlo and said that she mentioned that Candy doesn't do anything for her community and asked Marlo what she does for her community. Mm. Marlo says that she was wrong and she was just talking as she talks and Candy does a hell of a lot for her community she says that when she gets mad she says anything and you know it doesn't make it okay but she's taking accountability and she apologizes for it although Marlo did not answer the question and say what she did for her community I know she does the 
the thing with the, home, the foster home, girls. The, yeah. the, with the foster girls, yes. Um, so a fan asked Marlo and Sheree why they feel Candy is supposed to be a friend that they're not. Mm. Um, Sheree I'm says not. at this moment, she doesn't believe she's the type of friend that she expects Candy to be. But in the beginning, you know, she felt like she was. And felt like when Drew gave her the information, Candy should have came to her. Um, but Candy's like, boo, you didn't do the same for me. When Kim, they showed they showed a clip that apparently, you know, Kim was talking shit. She felt like she didn't come to her with all the facts. And of course, Sheree took a cop out and was like, you do the same thing. I felt like she did this early in the show also. Right. So Sheree does a lot of the same things that other people do that she calls people out for. But I said that. So Andy asked, um, what's his boy name? Todd, how he feels about Marlo saying that Ooh, now Candy this is not in his tax bracket. He said everybody in this room is below Candy's tax bracket. Okay. Apparently the only person that is not is Andy Cohen. Andy. But we don't know that for sure because Candy got plenty of jobs. Okay. Plenty, plenty of jobs. And she's been working a very, very long time. So I don't know how much I believe that, but you know, he is a white man in America, so it could be true. That part. So Andy addresses Marlo and says, you know, words between you and Ralph became words between you and Candy. And he wants to know what it was about Ralph's refusal that upset her. And she says, basically, like I said earlier, you know, it hit home for me. Um, and she ain't about to be in she decided she ain't about to be in married people's business no more. But personally, it did trigger her. Ralph said that he didn't expect, you know, to be put on blast by Marlo that night. And he thought that everyone would be able to understand, um, you know, what he may be going through and how he was choosing to navigate his family. So, you know, he wasn't expecting to get so messy. Andy asked Marlo when she started going at it with Candy, why she felt the need to bring Todd into it. And she says she shouldn't have did that. She was dead ass wrong. She did. She says I was her, proud of Marlo for that. What? I was proud of Marlo for that. Mm -hmm. For taking accountability. She says her and Todd have always been solid. And he's But cool. that's what I was talking about earlier. You see how she was like, she she acts, they are separate entities, but when she wants to get mad and get disrespectful, I can say trash and that's what I don't like because at the end of the day, there's still a unit. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't understand that because she's not married. Or never right. Married. But that's why I think it's, I don't know. I just don't like when she does that, when she's like, oh, well, no, I apologize to Todd. Andy asked Todd if he remembers calling Kansy a country bumpkin in Africa. He said, but I ain't never called, you know what? Let me not say it like that. <laughs> He said that he's never called his wife a country bumpkin. He said like that. Okay. Marlo says she does have a question though. She wants to know who she paid and how much she paid to be in this circle. Mm. And Todd says, remember, I used to work behind the scenes. In the production. He said, you know, huh? In the production. You know, he said in your earlier thirstier years, when they all went to Africa, Marlo was like, oh, when I came with all my Birkins, he said, no, when your thirst was elevated. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Marlo tells him, don't come in here being shady because I ain't about to be arguing with no man. Look, everybody was like, boo, you the one that asked. You the one that right, asked. Right, right. You left. No, Kenny, Kenny was the first to say it like, you asked for it. Here you go. Okay. You want to hear about it? Here you go. Right. But he says, Remember, I used to work in production. Um, and basically, you pay for everything. You pay for your trip. You pay for your flight. And says, you pay for everything to get there. You paid for all your expenses. And most people at the time, on the show don't pay for that. Huh? Most people on the show don't pay for that. And that's why. Why you did a hair flip? Oh, my God. Why you did a hair flip? <laughs> look, if you would have saw, look, if you would have saw, like, I know Drew. They showed Drew when he was saying that, like, who you pay for all that? Like, right. You didn't have a peach for real. For and real. it was Africa. Right? Right? This word. He says, at that time, you wanted to be around all these women. 
He says, you know, it was a little thirst, but look at you now. You good. You don't care. I love that. Right? <laughs> she was like, what? Did I pay? Did I pay for everything? She was like, did I pay for my room and stuff? She was like, you know what? She was like, okay, you know what? I paid for my ticket. I guess I was thirsty. Honey. She was asking. Andy was like, apparently you did. Yeah, Andy was like, yeah, Marlo, yeah, I think. Apparently, apparently he did. So Andy asked Marlo if she really believes that Candy is not worldwide. And she says, no, she believes that she's worldwide, but she just doesn't believe that she's in the same circles that she's in. Oh, yes. This this got under. She was like, I feel like when I go to France and I go. And maybe Andy was like, but she has way more Instagram followers than all of us combined. She's like, no, no, no. But I'm not talking about Instagram. When I go to like Paris or London, we're just going to be in different circles. Andy says. If okay, so like basically, like, are you saying that like he's like, what are, what are you saying? Right. And Marlo basically says, you know, if we go to Paris or London or something, you know, that I'm gonna be able to get in certain doors that she cannot. Now, by the look on everybody's face, I would predict this is a lie. Kenya was like, This is bullshit. <laughs> Kenya was like, girl, bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so he moves on and tells her that, you know, he thinks that it was brilliant that she brought chicken to the airport. Sonia tells him if he's never tried the Jamaican KFC, it is legendary. Okay. And clearly it mends relationships. You got to try it. Mm. And he brings up that Candy has forgave, you know, and she says, you know, it wasn't easy. It was not just like easy. I just had some chicken and I forgave this bitch. Basically, my husband said that he forgave her. And right. this is mainly who she was targeting. She was mainly targeting my husband. So if he could forgive her, why am I still holding on to this? You so, know, what, you know, all I keep thinking about is now I want to go to Jamaica and try KFC. And I don't even like KFC like that. I just want to go to Jamaica. Can we just go to Jamaica? I guess so, because I want to try KFC now. We need to just you go to me, Jamaica. You know me, it's all about the food, so. <laughs> so, basically, um, Candy, she just decided to move forward because her husband did. She felt, she felt like, you know, she was talking about him and he moved forward, so why should she hold on to it? So, Marlo says, no matter what, she feels that Candy knows that she's not a nasty person. And Candy's like, girl, you you know she she's not a nasty person? Who said that? Candy was quiet as a mouse. Right. Quiet as a little church mouse. Marlo apologized for the things that happened in Jamaica and says all she can do is make the changes and stop saying sorry and actually take action. And she promises to start doing that from today. And Candy says that would mean a lot more. Hmm. So Andy dismisses the guys and before they leave, Ross reminds them Don't fuck with my wife. With my wife period okay now andy feels the season ended on a positive note it and we'd like to hear from each one of the ladies about something they've learned or something that positive that you know they're gonna take away sonia says that she believes this group is a bunch of vibrant and incredible women they do have a misunderstanding every now and then and they they hope moving forward she hopes Moving forward, <laughs> they can handle that in a positive way Talk because about, there's a lot bigger things in the world. So she just wants to push past those things and have a great bond and sisterhood with the ladies. Because, you know, she says she ain't from Atlanta. So this is her sisterhood that she got while she's here. Um, Drew says it's been challenging and bittersweet for her and very vulnerable. She feels like she put a lot out on the line. But she says that she has a lot of things that she's working on and just wants everyone to continue to have grace with her. Marlo says that she's learned this season. She's going to think before she speaks because her the tongue is powerful and you can hurt people's feelings. I would have thought that's something you learn as a baby, as a child, whatever. Um, so Kenya says that she's um, going to take away resilience because after coming back from such a dark place 
You can I have, like Kenya's answer. You can have the capacity to love and come back stronger. Candy says she's taking away what she's taking away is bitch, I'm worldwide and she's owning it. I like Candy's answer. Um, Sheree says being around so long and being an OG she really feels like it was fun being with these girls and it was a real sisterhood and they really, you know, and have some good bonds. Contract and, next season because I don't really. Oh yeah, Martel, I have that story. Uh huh. Um, and she loves the support that she received from uh, doing your She by Sheree event. She by Sheree. And she says even from Drew, and you know she felt like it was genuine love and support in the room, and Sheree even gifted everyone with some things from her line and actually the shit that she pulled out on that uh rack actually looked really cute like i like the little bright colors that she had with the with the dark the little contrast i like the bag too so if y'all have not if y'all still here with us please make sure that you like the video and you comment no you subscribe if you're not already subscribed and hit the notification bell no so let me tell y'all. Why are you saying no? <laughs> Apparently, because I'm not done yet. Apparently, oh. <laughs> Drew let us know that Sheree took all that shit back after that. They didn't get to With keep none of that. No, Drew let her have it this week. What? And came out in these streets and let us know that Sheree took repoed all that stuff. After she put it on, she was like, no, I'm going to need this back. She collected all the water, everything. So wait, wait, wait. Like at the reunion or like after they took it home? Or did no, she say? at the reunion. Like after the taping, once the cameras went off, Shrey was like, I'm going to need that back. So it wasn't a gift? No. Did she say, I wonder if she took back Andy's sweatshirt that she handed him. Well, of course she ain't going to do that to Andy, but... She got to like order. You, know you know what? You know what, bitch? You know what? I'd have been like, you know what I really need to be doing? If I was Drew, I'd have been like, you know what I really need to be doing? Going around and collecting everybody else's shit to get my $700 back. How about that? I would never, I'm not giving you shit. Hold your breath. Yeah. So shout out to Drew for dropping that tea. We appreciate you for that. But if you <laughs> have not already, please make sure that you hit that like button. You comment. You subscribe. And you hit the notification bell. And y'all, thank you so much for sticking through with us. We thought the last one was the end, but it was the end. So here we are again. But with the end. <laughs> but thank you so much for sticking with us through Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is season 14 reunion part three. And um, yes, please catch us as we pick up for Potomac. I believe it's October 9th. So we will catch y'all then. And we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. And thank you for the support. Have a good night. Bye-bye.